हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन दिस ऑनलाइन क्लासेस होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड एंड स्टेइंग एट होम टेकिंग केयर ऑफ योर सेल्फ एंड योर पेरेंट्स यू नीड टू बी फिट एंड फाइन सो आई हियर कॉन्ग्रेचुलेट यू ऑल इन नाइन्थ स्टैंडर्ड आई विल बी स्टार्टिंग योर साइंस पार्ट टू so whatever you study you need to write in your notebook of that particular subject okay hope you got it so once again i welcome you in class 9 my best wishes for your new academic year you need to be fit and fine and very soon we will see each other so our first chapter of science part 2 is classification of plants but before that we will have a small review on how the living organism have been classified so let's see a small video classified into groups based on certain criteria it's important to do this in biology so that you can learn more about an organism from the others in its group but also it helps when you are uh, discovering new organisms and trying to work out things about them and also when you're communicating with other scientists to be able to be talking about the same types of organisms and using a, a common language uh, when you're describing them So one of the simplest forms of classification is to split living organisms into five different kingdoms. The kingdoms are animals, plants, fungi, protists and bacteria. And in this presentation we're going to go through each of these five kingdoms and look at the common characteristics that they have which allow an organism to be classified into that particular kingdom. We we'll also going to look at viruses even though they are not technically living things and therefore we do not classify them into kingdoms. We are also going to talk a little bit a little bit about viruses. So, plants, animals, fungi and protists are all what we call eukaryotic organisms. What that means is their cells have a nucleus. Bacteria are a very distinct separate group uh, out of these five kingdoms because their cells are different. They are fundamentally different. They are what we call prokaryotic organisms because their cells do not have a nucleus. So, let's start off with plants. Our plants are multicellular. Their cells contain chloroplasts. and therefore they can carry out photosynthesis making their own food what we call autotrophic they also have cell walls which are made of cellulose and they store their sugar as starch or sucrose now you can further classify plants into smaller and smaller subgroups but one of the biggest um, determining facts about what group a plant fits into is whether it flowers or not to non flowering plants and flowering plants flowering plants again there's all different types of flowering plants but you've got things like cereals such as maize we might get things like herbaceous legumes like pea plants okay animals now out of animals are also multicellular they get their nutrition from feeding on other organisms so we call heterotrophic um they are capable of movement from one place to another now all living organisms are capable of movement of some degree it's one of the characteristics of living things but animals are complex are capable of more complex movement usually from one location to another location they have nervous coordination They don't have a cell wall or chloroplasts and, and do not photosynthesize, and they store their carbohydrate as glycogen. Again, you can further divide animals, and you might divide them into invertebrates and vertebrates, whether they have backbones or not. And an example of an invertebrate might be a mos uh, mosquito, a type of insect. An example of a vertebrate might be um, a human, like a, a mammal. Fungi. Now, fungi can be multicellular or unicellular. Um, the cell wall is made of something called chitin. and it's made of a network of fibers uh, called a mycelium of hyphae and they have many nuclei they are multinucleated now they feed in a quite strange way they feed by something called saprophytic nutrition using extracellular enzymes basically they secrete enzymes onto their food 
the food breaks down externally from them, from their cells, and then they absorb by diffusion the, the resulting uh, smaller nutrients um, that are now available after the digestion. And they store their carbohydrate in the same form as animals do, which is glycogen. So as I said, you can get single-celled fungi or you can get multi-celled fungi. Single-celled fungi, a common example of that is yeast, uh, which is used for baking and, and brewing. A uh, most cellular fungus is something like yucca, which is the kind of stuff that you get growing on your mouldy bread or mouldy fruit. Protoctis. Now, protoctis are a strange collection of organisms. They don't really fit into any other groups. They're what's often referred to as the dustbin kingdom, because basically if it's not clearly a plant or clearly an animal, or clearly a fungi, then it might it'd probably end up in protoctis. So some of the organisms here have animal-like um, characteristics, some have more plant-like characteristics. They're nearly all single-celled. They're usually very, very basic organisms. Um, an animal-like example would be something like an amoeba, and a plant-like protoctis would be something like chlorella. So the last kingdom is bacteria. Like I said, bacteria are fundamentally different from the other four kingdoms we've already looked at. Um, they are all single-celled organisms, and these cells are a lot smaller than the other cells we've been talking about. They do have a cell wall bacteria, but it's made of something completely different to a fungus cell wall or plant cell wall. This stuff is, is called peptidoglycan. Um, some of them have something called a capsule or a slime layer, which can help protect them in their environment. They don't have a nucleus at all, and uh, they, some of them have flagella, these kind of little tails that allow them to swim around. And they also contain things called plasmids. Plasmids are these little singular loops of DNA which, are, um, which the bacteria have separate from their main DNA. Their main DNA is just one circular chromosome. And some bacteria can actually photosynthesize. Here's a, a diagram of a typical bacterial cell. You can see the plasmid and the flagella uh, chromosome there in the middle and the, the membrane, the cell wall, and the capsule on the outside. They still have cytoplasm. Uh, like normal cells as well. Some examples now of bacteria classified further according to the shape of them. Uh, here are some rod shaped ones, Lactobacillus bulgaricus. Now, these are actually the ones that you use to make um, yogurt from milk. You add it to milk to turn milk into yogurt. Uh, and the, ones, uh, the other ones are spherical shaped and they're called pneumococcus. And these are actually the ones that uh, cause the disease pneumonia. So, um, another thing to talk about in this topic is pathogens. What is a pathogen? Because some of these organisms can be pathogens. Now, a pathogen is any organism that ends up causing a disease. It could be a fungus, like athlete's foot. It could be a bacteria, like cholera. It could be a protoctus, like plasmodium, which is the, the organism that causes malaria. Or, it could be a virus, such as influenza. Now, pathogens because of their nature of being living, or, living organisms, can be passed on from person to person, or organism to organism, so they are the things that usually cause infectious disease, as we call it. Now, this leads on to talk more about viruses. Now, as I said, viruses are not classified as living things because they're not made of cells, and they do not carry out the characteristics of living things that we've talked about in the other video. They're actually much smaller than even bacterial cells. These are tiny, tiny, tiny little things. Um, they are all parasites. What that means is that they live and reproduce inside a host and cause the host harm. They can't reproduce without a host to do it with. They are made of uh, genetic material, either DNA or RNA, surrounded by a protein coat. So no membrane, no cytoplasm, no cell wall. These are not cells, remember. They're not living things. And all natural viruses cause disease and they can infect every type of living, living organism. It's not just humans that get infected by viruses, plants get infected by viruses, bacteria get infected by viruses. Here's some examples, the tobacco mosaic virus. Now this actually infects plants and prevents the formation of chloroplasts, which leaves these little patches all over the plant, which is why it gets the name tobacco mosaic virus. The HIV virus, which is the one that infects uh, uh, humans and destroys the, the immune system, ends up ca causing AIDS and influenza, which you'll have all heard about, obviously, which is the flu virus. Now, here's a quick uh, 10 true-false questions to check your knowledge on this topic. If you just pause the video now and write down true or false for each one, and then you can press play and test your knowledge after. Affects uh, humans and destroys the, the immune system, ends up ca causing AIDS. 
and influenza, which you have all heard about, obviously, which is the flu virus. Now, here's a quick uh, 10 true-false questions to check your knowledge on this topic. Okay, so hope you have seen the how uh, classification has been done of my uh, all the living organism. So here we are going to study living organism, how it is classified. This system of classification of living organism is proposed by the scientist Robert Whitaker in 1969. 1969. Uh, dear students, in your textbook, this uh, year is wrongly mentioned, so please do correction. It is 1969, not 1959. Okay. Now, the living organism is mainly divided into two main groups, that is prokaryote and eukaryote, or you can say prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Now, what do you mean by prokaryotic? Prokaryotic means where the nucleus is not well defined and eukaryotic is the in which the nucleus is well defined. We all know that all living organisms on this planet are made up of cell and every cell has nucleus which perform the activities which control the activities of the cell but in prokaryotic the nucleus is not well defined this is the major difference between the prokaryote and eukaryote okay now prokaryote has kingdom monera uh, i have highlighted all kingdom with the red color so kingdom monera is comes under prokaryote now eukaryote is again divided into two main groups that is the unicellular and multicellular. So what do you mean by unicellular? Uni means one or uni means single. The organism which is made with a single cell is called unicellular. Whereas multicellular means if the organisms are made up of many cells are called multicellular multi means many more in number okay hope you have understood this both the terms now kingdom protista comes under unicellular all the algae comes in protista now multicellular again divided into two groups with cell wall and without cell wall with cell wall means where the cell wall is present and another group where the cell wall is absent. So this is the two groups of multicellular. Now with cell wall there are again two kingdoms under this head that is autotrophic and heterotrophic. Auto means self. Auto means self. The organism which makes their own food is called autotrophic. Jo organism apna khana khud banata hai, usko autotrophic kaha jata hai. Uska example hai kingdom plantae. And another group is heterotrophic. Hetero means others. Hetero ka meaning kya hota hai? Others. So ye apna khane ke liye dusro pe nirbhar hote hai ya dusro pe depend hote hai usko heterotrophic kaha jata hai aur uska example hai kingdom fungi ya uh, kingdom fungi okay both the pronunciations are right jo bhi uchcharan hai fungi ya fungi dono sahi hai so and for without cell wall we have a kingdom animalia abhi ye kingdom animalia kya hai isme har animal even human beings are also included in kingdom animalia. Hope you have understood this classification of living organism. So which are the cell, special cell organelles that differentiate plant cell from animal? Abhi cell organelles are the 
जैसे हमारे बॉडी के पार्ट्स होते हैं या बॉडी ऑर्गन्स होते हैं वैसे हर सेल के अलग अलग पार्ट्स होते हैं या उसको सेल ऑर्गेनलिज कहा जाता है तो ऐसे कौन से सेल ऑर्गेनलिज है जो प्लांट को और एनिमल को अलग अलग करते हैं सो दैट यू हैव ऑलरेडी लर्न इन योर प्रीवियस क्लास सो जस्ट थिंक एंड लेट मी नो योर आंसर